this video is for anybody who went out and bought themselves a DVD or a GPS in-dash stereo receiver. Now, what I want to cover in this video is about doing what's called the bypass. Um, a lot of guys out there, I guess, make a whole lot of money off of poor guys just buying these little bypasses they call hack. I mean, I don't, I don't get it. I mean, the word hack in my car are two things I don't ever want to hear in the same sentence, but... Surprisingly so, people do it and people buy it, I guess because they're brainwashed or some reason, I don't know. Uh, a lot of guys will actually spend the money and go out and buy something like this. This here is a Pack tr 7 or a PTR7. All this is is just a switching device. This can do all different types of trigger applications. So, the most typical scenario is your receiver needs to see a ground input on the parking brake wire. Like, say, a Pioneer GPS, anything made from four years to current, you have to actually move a pin. So th this video is not going to apply to you. So if you have a Pioneer where you have to jump a pin over, this is not for you. But, but if you want to stick around and learn something about how to do it for all the others, by all means, um, sit around and I'll show you what to do with them all. Now, this one here is a, cl is a Clarion. It's an NX501. It's actually the first time I've ever seen it, and it's actually pretty nice, I must say. I mean, look at this thing, huh? Pretty damn nice, I must say. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to throw the DVD on. And what does it say? Caution. Video is disabled for your safety. For your safety. Not for your enjoyment, but for your safety. Okay. So on the back of the stereo, like almost any one of them, it's going to have a long green wire. That's pretty much the color that all these manufacturers use. Now, unfortunately, um, actually I should say fortunately, Half the people that are watching this video right now, including you, you might not even have to even apply this or buy anything at all. So don't be a sucker, don't be a sheep, and just go on there and see that somebody sells a bypass or one of these hack bypasses specific to your model. Because the chances are, 50-50, that you won't even need it. Now, to prove my theory, say if I you went out and bought this Clarion NX501, figure, oh man, I spent six, seven hundred dollars on a stereo, I gotta have to spend another fifteen, twenty just to get the bypass going, right? Wrong. Now, DVD's in there. I'm gonna take this and just ground it to the chassis. Amazingly enough, see what happens. Ta-da! It works. So, instead of going out and getting yourself one of these or one of those, wasting your money, wasting your time, installing it and doing whatever, just test it. Just think about it before you go out and spend your money on it. But let's just say for everybody else that has one of these bypass kits and actually needs to interface with it, I'm going to show you how you do it. Instead of using one of those parts that are all pretty nicely packaged up, use one of these. I use these in most of, so many videos I, I use these over and over again. It's a relay. This is an installer's best friend. You should really learn about how to use relays. If anybody ever wants it, just ask me. I'll send you a link uh, to a PDF for a whole guide on how to use a relay for hundreds of applications. It's a really good tool to have and it's something every installer should know how to use. So what I'm going to do is real quick just show you the bottom of my relay. This is a single pole double throw relay. Pretty standard uh, Potter and Brumfield relay. Now from this application, the middle pin, which is 87A, we are not going to use. However, we are going to use 86, we're going to use 85, 87, and 30. Okay. Now, these two on the left and right are the coil of the relay. So what you're going to want to do is on 86, you're going to want to put ground on, actually let me pick that up again. You're going to want to put ground on 86, and you're also going to want to put ground on 87, because this sig most of these receivers need to see a ground signal in order to activate and bypass that video bypass. So 87 and 86, you're going to want to put ground to. 85 is going to go to this here, which is the blue-white. Blue-white is the amplifier turn-on. That's going to click the coil, and it's going to switch what's on 87 onto 30 output which is going to go to the green wire on the back of your receiver. Okay, so what, what we're doing is after you turn your vehicle on, this is going to power up. That blue-white wire is going to turn to 12 volts, click the coil, and it's going to send the ground into that wire. 
okay? And why this is also useful, I mean, is because, say, if you had an Alpine unit. Alpine units, they got really smart a few years back. What they did is they made it so that way you can't just do like what I did with this one by taking the ground and just doing the old cheapo, just do that. This won't work. And you have to actually turn the key on, then you have to pulse the ground into the unit. Okay, so that's exactly what this is going to do. And I'm going to show you my test light when I'm all done wiring it up. Okay, so put that down. Just going to grab a piece of wire. And if you're going to do this, if you have the, the luxury of having the different colored wires, by all means, try to do that because it's a good habit to get into. I'm just going to do this real tentative. You're going to do it nicer, of course. Okay, so there's my trigger input. This is the blue white, the amp turn on from the receiver. Okay. Crimp that right on there. That we're going to put on 80, 85. It actually, it'll work if you put on 85 or 86, but actually there is a reason why I do it this way. Relay should be wired a certain way. You should always put the positive voltage on 86. That's another story. It's probably a whole other video entirely, so I'll leave that alone. But 86 is where you want to put your positive. Okay, so now I'm going to take another piece of wire, black, because I'm going to use this for ground. And what I'm doing here, I'm going to strip these two and I made another little piece here, and I'll show you what I want to do with that. I'm going to make a little jumper. So I got my grounds. I put them together. Take my connector. Put it on there. Okay. Like that. And the other one you have left. Put a female on there. You always want to crimp on the back side of the terminal because there is a ring in there. You don't want to split the wire. Always crimp on the solid piece of the sleeve on these terminals. So now, I'm going to put ground onto the top, which is 87. When I connect this onto 86, you're going to hear a click. That's the relay coil clicking. Okay. Then I got one wire left, which is the output. Number 30 on the bottom of the relay is your output. Crimp that. Connect that. See that? Just came on. So now, Every time you turn this on, it's going to click this relay and keep it energized, and it's going to send the ground, because by default it has a 12-volt output, but you're using this relay for this scenario to invert it to a negative signal and throwing it on the output leg, number 30 on the relay. And you would just take this and mount it behind your dash someplace in your firewall and a harness, whatever. All right, so... Just to recap... Out of the stereo, you got 12 volts into your relay, and on the output side, you got a ground. Let's see if I can show you that. Okay. So, let me turn that unit off. Nothing. Turn it back on. There you go. There's your ground. Once the unit reboots, the DVD should come right on. And that's all, folks. Enjoy.